Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. Getting started in FPV. Uh, I was thinking about this recently with my son and I had been telling him that he needed to learn how to do line of sight flying so he could get a feel for how the, uh, the vehicle travels in the air and the inputs. Um, but I've recently changed my mind. I think if you want to FPV you should just jump right in. But the other side of things, if you don't have any experience FPV, how do you know what it's going to cost you? Um, how, do you how do you know that it's going to be for you? Maybe if you're someone who gets car sick or maybe you have, um, um, you get dizzy easy if you spin around too much. Myself, I have a little bit of vertigo and that was one of my concerns when I get on, got involved with FPV was, am I going to be able to handle this? Is this going to make me sick? Uh, I'd seen videos where people talked about how they were they didn't feel well after their first few flights, and some of them got past it. In other instances, I don't know if they ever got past it. But I wanted to cover this as far as my perspective with uh, coaching my 11-year-old, who really loves to watch the, the videos of Mr. Steel and Charpu and uh, Matty Stunts and all these you know, out-of-this-world pilots. Um, but now that I've changed my position on just getting started FPV, Shouldn't we go in with our budget in mind? I know I feel guilty when I start spending a lot of money on this hobby because that's money I'm taking away from the family. And many of you probably have fam families or things you have to budget your money towards um, outside of just this hobby. Um, so uh, these are projects I've covered in the past. This is just the camera system off of the FPV kit for the, uh, this is, happens to be for the SEMA X5. Um, and it works perfectly well. Right now it doesn't have an antenna on it, but that can be resolved. So if you have a little bit of soldering skills, this is actually going to be one of the cheaper ways of getting involved in FPV. Because you can take a toy quad like this. You know, say this is 35 bucks. This happens to be the uh, Bang Toys X8, which is it's a pretty good little flyer. And you could mount this to the bottom or to the top and, you know, use hot glue or foam tape, however it works and for works best for you and with very little work you've taken this thirty dollar toy quad and you've turned it into an fpv quad of course the next part is your goggles but let's look at a few other options before we start worrying about our goggles so this was twenty seven bucks then you add a palolu regulator for another four dollars so you're looking at thirty one dollars um, it comes stock with a uh, dip switches, but if you have to get more of those, then that's a, another minor expense. Um, if you want to record, you've got to add some sort of switching mechanism down here. You can look at my other project. I'll link it up here um, to make this all work like you see in front of you. And this isn't the stock camera um, sensor and uh, lens. This is for the, uh, uh, it's the wide angle lens for the Mobius uh, 808. Um, but we also have this option, which is really nice because it's really light, although this one you can record your flight with. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, for about 40 bucks you can record your flights and you have FPV and VTX all built into one outside of the Palolu. Um, this, you're obviously looking at the Quantum Elite, but uh, Banggood also has this product now. It's not called, of course, the Quantum Elite. This... This item is called the FX797T, um, and it's it's the same. Uh, there, I have no doubts in my mind. These things have been popping up all over the place now. It looks like um, the vendors got together, and Hobby King had an initial order or release of these, and now they're just going wild on the Internet. So you can pick one of these up just about anywhere you wish. Um, so you can get this for $41.00. It's our, it doesn't need a voltage regulator, so you save five bucks there. And you can just mount it on the front with some foam tape. Again, just using some foam tape here. And it'll work just fine. You'll get some prop in your picture, but we always kind of do. Um, or you can mount it on top if you want to do something a little bit different that exposes it to crash damage. But again, we could take a toy quad with an inexpensive camera and we have this option of getting involved with FPV without spending lots of money. You know, a 250 quad like this, you're going to spend anywhere from, if you buy one ready to fly, oops, the camera fell off. You buy one ready to fly for 190 bucks or something like that. Um, and then if you start buying higher performance motors and you've got your prop costs, your costs start to go really high. Um, 
And this is another option that I've got here. This happens to be the Mold King. You may have seen it in some of my other videos. This has got the all-in-one uh, 600 TV line camera combo from Banggood. I don't recommend this one, though, because it gets really hot. Um, so I think you have to really be careful about your flight times with this one. Um, and instead of doing a voltage regulator, I happen to have some little uh, Ishin 150 milliamp batteries, and I just stick the battery to the bottom, and I've run the power lead from in there out here of course I had to adapt uh, a battery lead to that so there's really minimal work doing something like this you see I've carved these things out but you could do the same thing with this but without carving it out you just stick it to the front lower it down so it's below the props and again you've got yourself an FPV quad and you're just using the stock controller these two I, I happen to have um, have good mixes of rates with their pitch and roll and their speeds and their yaw and everything but they are always in some form of self leveling but if you're getting started that's fine um, and the other thing that we have to think about is our goggles and as you know I fly with these quantum v2s let me raise the camera here so we can get this all in the picture Whoa. so I have these quantum v2s and I don't think of this as a, a really good budget op. And sure, it's it's cheaper than the Fat Sharks. It's cheaper than the the three and five hundred dollar goggles. But still, you buy the kit for fifty five bucks. You buy a receiver, which you can get these really cheap, like this uh, Boss Cam that I have here. This is only nineteen dollars now, so that's pretty inexpensive but you're already up to about 80 bucks then you add an antenna so you've got four or five dollars there and then you add a lipo battery to it and you've got another six or seven dollars there and you end up pushing close to ninety dollars for your goggles Ishin came out with their vr 007 and if you don't have corrective vision or if you don't wear glasses uh, if you wear contacts you'll probably be fine but all reports are that that's a pretty fair kit um, and it's only 69 bucks, so, and it's all inclusive. It seems to be a little better form factor than the Quantum V2s as far as its functions externally. Um, it just has the straps around the back and the front, it's all hard plastic. So that's gonna be the least expensive way that you can get involved with your goggles is to just buy the Ishin VR007. And I'll link everything down in the um, description. Well, as much as YouTube will allow me to link down there, there is a limit to how much text you can put down there. Um, other options that you, if you're a little bit handy and soldering isn't something you can, isn't something that you're afraid of, uh, you can buy the uh, cardboard kit um, that you see here, the FPV cardboard for 5 inch, for 5 inch, 4.3 inch monitor. I believe it takes a 4.3 inch monitor from what I've read elsewhere. So that's only 9 bucks. Of course, it's just a cardboard kit. You're still going to have to buy an antenna, so you're going to have 4 or $5 there. And this screen seems to work, but you're probably going to have to decase it. Um, and this is another $16. Bucks. Um, then you have your receiver that you need, and this is an Ishin 32-channel receiver for another $18. Bucks. So you can get in under $50 bucks if you're willing to do a little bit of wiring and you're willing to put up with cardboard goggles. Um, some people fly with screens and it's pretty rare that you see screens that are below, you know, say 80 bucks. Um, if they are below 80 bucks, you kind of have to wonder, um, what kind of qual quality screen is it? Uh, something else that you can do to get involved in FPV, um, as far as not using goggles, uh, you could borrow a pair. <laughs> you know, if you've got a buddy that's got an extra set, you can borrow a pair. But also check out the uh, classified section of RC groups. A lot of people bring stuff to sale up there, and it doesn't... Um, I think the risk is relatively minor. Of course, always use PayPal when ordering this stuff. But you can look there, and you can find stuff at a deeper discount. Say you just really want the Fat Shark goggles, or you want that form factor. You can find some there, Last uh, the last iteration of Fat Sharks or uh, Sky Zones. And you can pay probably... Oh, I would say anywhere from 75 to 100 bucks less than retail price for them. Um, so that's another good option. You can also find the Quantum V2s for sale on there. People have moved on to Fat Shark, so they got rid of their, their Quantums. Um, so there are ways for 
under $120 that you can get involved in FPV. Um, it's really amazing that we have all these parts and pieces that we can buy to do this stuff at the price we, we, we can achieve. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, I, I really enjoy this and I, I hope that everybody else that thinks about RC or sees these FPV videos jumps into because it's good fun. Uh, for me, it's it's not only fun, but it's a great distressor. If I'm having anything going on in the day that's bothering me, then you know a few few laps around the yard or in the house it seems to take care of those things at least uh, enough to let me get to bed. But uh, that's kind of why I'm doing my this channel was I wanted to help more people get involved and I wanted to cover things um, that came to me a little bit differently than we see on places um, like Bruce's channel over at uh, RC Model Reviews or even Flight Test. They did have some great projects um, and they're kind of all over flight and they had these great edu educational uh, systems that they get involved in. But for anyone out there who's wanting to get involved in FT FPV and they're worried about the cost, I, I would say just jump in and jump in with one of these low-end toy quads. They're not necessarily even low-end. They're pretty amazing for 35 bucks what you can make these things do and see if it's for you first enjoy it fly it build your budget and then move on to something like a, a, a brush micro quad that has a programmable flight control board and a, a receiver that has a little bit more customization and maybe some upper end goggles you know you while you're doing these you can save your money in order to be able to move on in the hobby if you guys have any other options that we need to present um, please let me know. Um, hopefully other people will find your comment as well and I can note it in the description and we can help more people get involved with this great hobby. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos.